after losing the Time Weir derby, today we have the Weir Tees derby in the FA Cup. Middlesbrough vs Sunderland. <laughs> was a mouthful wasn't it hello everyone i'm dan welcome to part 32 of our sunderland fm 21 sleeping giant series and i uh, hope you're all doing very well and today is another big game i know we're going to come back for the tottenham hotspur game but when this game was drawn i thought it'd be silly to skip it we always show the newcastle one so let's show the middlesbrough game today let's see how we've been getting on since you was last with us and you was last with us for the disappointing one nil defeat to newcastle united where we had that Goal chalked off by VAR at the end. I'm still not convinced about it at all. I still think it's the worst decision I have seen on Football Manager and certainly one of the worst VAR decisions. If you didn't see that, have a look at the video above here um, because it was absolutely shocking. Uh, it didn't get, go too well the next few games. We played Wolves away. We drew 0-0. Very dull affair there. Was quite we Actually, in fact, we was very lucky to come away with a draw. Leicester was away next. We was 1-0 up early on in the 20th minute, but we couldn't hold on. And uh, we lost 3-1. We really lost our way in that game. We started well, went 1-0 up and completely crumbled to a 3-1 defeat to Leicester. West Ham United was at home next and it was another defeat, two defeats in a row in the Premier League. Liam Delap scored again in the 21st minute and uh, West Ham beat us 2-1 unfortunately. If I click on it, you can see the scorers. There we go. Uh, Janssen, uh, sorry, Janssen put West Ham United ahead. Delap equalised and then uh, West Ham won it in the 74th minute. But we was back to winning ways. We went away to Aston Villa and we absolutely battered them. If we can have a look here at the um, stats 2.55 xg 22 shots 14 shots on target how we only won one nil i will never know i think we hit the woodwork Did it tell you the woodwork uh, we hit the woodwork quite a few uh, it wasn't this game we didn't hit the woodwork at all i thought it was that game there was a game in and around here where we hit the woodwork three uh, three times it was mental but it wasn't that one but we should have won four or five nil it was crazy whole city was up next in the fa cup we played a relatively strong side we made five changes you'll notice a new signing in there who will show you shortly in fact you knew about him but he signed too late and he joined this window but annoyingly since that game he's been uh, or since the southampton game Certainly last couple of games he's been out on international duty and he's got himself injured on international duty, which is rather annoying. But after that, we played Southampton, so it was back-to-back -back wins in the league, three in all competitions, and uh, Liam Delap scored again. Max Finn as well is, a, is someone that's come back from on loan. He, he's been playing really well. It's crazy. He's, he's got a great potential, Max Finn, and uh, he, he is just growing and growing and developing as a player. He's currently rated at a National League level, but he's come in and started playing really well for us. So we've actually been using him uh, of late. And uh, we went away to Liverpool, and this was a fantastic result. 1-1 one, one there, both of us uh, fighting out for the European places at the minute. And uh, we went 1-0 one, went down early on, but we stayed in the game, and we did quite well. We uh, we went to a... Where is it? There, yeah, look, we created a lot of chances. 1.42 XG, but so did Liverpool. It was a very open game. It could have been about 5-4. It was nuts. Um, oh, we don't see how we ended the game. Basically, we ended with three strikers, uh, two wingers, one holding midfielder, and uh, two very high wingbacks to go and get our result or to get, get us back into the game and eventually Liam Delap did score a goal to equalise and then next up was a 3-0 demolition of very much struggling West Bromwich Albion their 19th in the league struggling and there was 3-0 up at half time unfortunately we couldn't find a goal in the second half but again we was absolutely fabulous so it's four, uh, it's four wins in the last five so we've really turned around the poor form since she was last with us a few players have come in then. This is one you knew about, John Zuniga. Zuniga, I don't know how to pronounce this. He is a Colombian international. As I said, he went away with the under-20s, uh, the under -20s, rather. Got himself injured, but he is back fit. But like his overall fitness doesn't look great, so he probably won't feature today. But a uh, very good player. He's a good deep-lying playmaker, so he's, um, he, he's there as a backup to Falgini, really. Um, and yeah, I think uh, I like his attributes. First touch is great. Passing technique, his teamwork. Uh, some of his mentals and physicals are really, really high. So he looks like a really 
good find. He's a wonder kid and he's 18 years of age and hopefully we can keep hold of him. Uh, another one we brought in is uh, Joshim Ekat. <laughs> e I, I need to just buy players that... I, I need to tell my scouts, right, um, just look for players that I can pronounce so I can never pronounce them. He's coming from Anderlecht. I think he's e uh, It's coming from Anderlecht. 19-year-old goalkeeper. He looks very, very good. Again, promising goalkeeper is his media description. He's gone immediately out on loan to Leganes in um, Spain. I think that's Deportivo La Coruña. Must be. Um, he's gone straight out on loan on there for some first team football. He again, he looks decent. Um, he's currently operating at a championship level, but will be a Premier League player in the future if he develops correctly. And and, and another signing is a winger, Arta, Brazilian. Uh, Arta. He's capped at under twenty level. He's not capped for the seniors, but twenty five years of age. He's coming into his prime. And we really needed a winger because we finally got rid of Ojo. Thank God for that. He's gone to Fulham, but we'll go through that in a minute. But he could play either side at the minute. Helino's out here. We're without Andre Green at the minute for about four weeks. So he's been actually playing on the on the left-hand side. Although one of his traits is to cut inside from the right. So we're probably not getting the best out of him. But we need him uh, on the left-hand side at the moment. Transfers out then. Three players. And that's his eke out that we know he's gone on loan. So has Dan Neil. He's gone out on loan to Leighton Orient. He came back. And he's gone straight back out on loan again. And uh, Shay J Ojo, finally we got rid of him, 4.1 million, raising to 5 million. He has been a massive disappointment for us. And um, glad to see the back of him, to be honest. We've got 5 million back, well, potentially 5 million. So, um, yeah, that gives us room for manoeuvre in the rest of the window because we have 27 or just under 28 million pounds left. So hopefully we can bring someone else in. I want another left winger in there for sure and possibly a striker. So before we move on to today's FA Cup tie against Middlesbrough, this is what the Premier League table looks like. And we'll actually show you this view because that's a bit better. You can see the whole table. Um, as you can see, we're six in the league. We've got a game in hand over rivals Newcastle who are a point above us. Currently, we're currently three points off Spurs. So the Spurs game still a big game. Of course, when we were last talking about it, Tottenham were top. We was around like second or third, I think it was. Uh, but now we're down to six. After them three, was it three games, four games without a win? It really did... Uh, knock us off our stride but we've got back into winning form again and uh, we're still knocking on the door of Champions League football which is absolutely incredible we're nowhere near the relegation battle which everyone said we would be we're nowhere near the bottom of the table which the media predicted we're up in six if we can finish there it'll be absolutely phenomenal but I have got my eyes on Champions League football greedy I know and this is the side we are going to face in Middlesbrough at the Riverside with it is Butland in goal, Delcroix, Benkovic, Hughes, Niambe, basically, um, what's his name, House is out, he's been out injured but he's struggling to get back fitness wise, we should have really given him a game today but I want to play my strongest possible team to hopefully see off Middlesbrough and get through to the next round. Uh, Canute Folgini in midfield. Arta, your first look at him today. He's going to play as an inside forward. In fact, he should play as an inverted winger. Can he play inside? He, can. he has been playing inside forward. Don't know what I'm talking about. So he's going to cut in from the left rather than the right. Uh, Sibley, uh, sorry, Helino cannot play out on the left. Sibley is a number 10 with Delap up top. Delap has been on fire. 15 goals this season so far. Hopefully he can continue that today and get his 16th. We've only selected six subs. Why have we done that? Let's put someone else on the bench because that will be rather handy. Handy. We will go for Fraser if we can select him on the bench. There we go. Lovely stuff. So a left back on the bench. Uh, apparently we have to give him a squad number. Well, we'll automate that. I don't care what squad number he wears. It doesn't bother me. Some people do like to do all their squad numbers, but I just can't be bothered, can I? I used to go through and do like 1 to 11, literally my first team. If they were my strongest players, they would only be allowed to choose between or have between 1 to 11 because I was a bit a bit sad like that. But now I don't do that. Right, we're the TV game. It's the evening game, Middlesbrough, Sunderland. Hopefully a good derby game and nothing ruined by a VAR. I don't know if there will be VAR here because Middlesbrough are currently in the championship. They're doing very well, I should have showed you. They're fourth in the championship, just four points behind uh, the automatic promotion spaces. So it is going to be tough, but 20 minutes gone. Uh, we've had all the opportunities and now here is the first highlight. Helino on the ball. Back to Niambe. niambe has been absolutely superb since Fuchs has been out injured. Lovely ball across and Arta's there for the tap-in. Was it Arta or Delap? But it doesn't matter, it's disallowed. It was Arta. It would have been his first Sunderland goal. And I'm struggling to see why this was offside. Let's have a look. Right. Someone mentioned that maybe the disallowed goal in the Sunderland, in the Newcastle game in the previous episode was because um, Delap was in an offside position in, interfering with the goalkeeper's vision. There, he wasn't interfering with the goalkeeper's vision. It's been scraped off. This time, VAR wasn't there to... Um, 
actually confirm that. But I, I think, again, that one was a little bit harsh. So it's 0-0. It should be 1-0 in my opinion. Um, Middlesbrough have had no opportunities so far. We're going to say, let's give the fans something to cheer. And we should be 1-0 up again, in my opinion. We're getting absolutely screwed out of these derby games with stupid offside decisions. Having a look here, Arta's not having a great one on the left, despite having his goal disallowed. We are going to move him to the right and see what he's all about. Uh, Helino can't play there. Is Hack back? Hack isn't back either. We're going to bring Max Finn on and take off Helino. You can have a little glimpse of Max Finn as well because he's been absolutely superb for us. Right, here we go. Come on, boys. Second half, Middlesbrough, Sunderland. We are going to change to an attacking lineup as well. And hopefully, we can go and score a goal or two and put this tie to bed. We don't really want to replay at this stage of the season because of injuries. And as I'm saying injuries, look at this. The lap has got himself injured, which is not ideal at all. We're going to take him immediately off, put Niall Ennis on. Um, and Sibley's looking like he's struggling as well, so he's going to have to probably come off at some stage as well. But 65 minutes gone, it's Middlesbrough nil, Sunderland nil. What is happening, boys? There's nothing going on here, and we're going to make another change because we don't want players getting injured, and we are going to take off Sibley, I think. Should we take off Sibley, put a Bamiang on? We're going to go 4-4-2. Four, four, deep line playmaker, uh, deep line forward for a Bamiang, rather. We're going to put Folgini on a supporting uh, deep line playmaker role. I'm probably going to put uh, Del Croix back as a wing back as well on attack. Max Fing can be a supporting inside forward now, or inverted winger rather. It's probably better. Um, right, come on, boys. 15 minutes remaining. This isn't good. Middlesbrough nil, Sunderland nil. They would love to take this back to the stadium and light, won't they? There's 33,000 here today, apparently. We're going to demand more from the boys. And it's going to be a dull nil-nil. I thought it would be a fiery uh, derby game for you. I keep forgetting what it's called. Is it... Uh, T Weir, T's Weir Derby, I think. Probably completely got that wrong, got it uh, uh, the wrong way around. But anyway, Canute on the ball. Can we go and score late on in this game? Abamyang, Ennis. Ennis turns, Ennis is through on goal. Surely he's going to score. No, Ennis does in the 86 minutes. It's Middlesbrough nil, Sunderland 1. Bragging rights coming back to the stadium of light. And it is a fantastic goal. And hopefully that's us through to the fifth round of the FA Cup because I would love a cup run this year. Canute, lovely back heel. He's been a fantastic signing. Abamyang, great pass into Ennis, whose change of pace took him away from the Middlesbrough defence. And finally, we have a goal to celebrate. Middlesbrough nil, Sunderland one. Happy, happy days. Hopefully we can hang on to this now. We're going to go back to a positive mindset. Five minutes added on. We have kind of deserved it. Middlesbrough haven't had a shot on target today. So that tells me we do deserve the victory, but it wasn't a fantastic performance. But there we go, changing to the 4-2-4 did help us win the game. Good win, boys. Well done. We won't say anything like, oh, it should have been a better result than that. It's always tough when you're playing a rival. Is there any other shocks in, or are there any shocks in the rest of the FA Cup today? So let's have a look. Chelsea won 5-1. Liverpool United was a big game. That was 1-1. Are there any shocks in there? I don't think there is at a glance. Spurs won at Rotherham. Oh, no, no FA Cup shocks to give you. What a boring day in the FA Cup that is. So let's have a look at the schedule and see when you will come back. We'll scroll down here. I, I did say we'll come back for Tottenham, but that is far too soon in my opinion. So we will play on a little bit more. Um, I probably We're not really playing any teams around us. You've seen Chelsea already, I think, this season. Have you seen Chelsea this season or was that the season? Anyway, probably not Chelsea. Um, I think they were the last game of last season, actually. So we will come back around here. So between, what, depending on who we've got in the FA Cup, if it's a big, big tie in the FA Cup, like Newcastle or something, we'll show you it. But FA Cup isn't the priority until probably the later rounds if we do get through. So it might, it probably won't be the FA Cup. It will be around here somewhere. I'll decide as we go through, but it won't be too far ahead in the future. So guys, if you did enjoy that, please leave a like on there for me. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button below. Hit the little bell to be notified every time I upload a video. And thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time here on Reece FC. Bye-bye.